Um, I am a single mom of one outgoing, uh, smart, funny, uh, just everything little boy, and he will be turning five soon. Um, if you see me wipe my sweat this morning, I just finished a workout, and um, that was gonna be the first thing I uh, talked to you guys about today is um, first as a single mom that you have to really learn is to take care of yourself as well as your child. And that is mentally, um, physically, and spiritually. And um, the physical one is the last one that I am getting back um, into doing. Um, I learned that, hey, he's at the age, if I wanna push him in a stroller, doing a walk, or if he wants to work out with me at the home, let him. Um, but I had to get that physical activity back in because a lot of times we lose ourselves in the fact that we want to take care of our children. And my son is a ball of energy who loves to go outside. So that gives me extra time to get in some, losing some calories and everything because he wants to go outside and he wants to play soccer. He wants to play baseball. He wants to run around the house. Hey, that's a positive for me and giving me that, um, physical workout at the same time. Um, mentally, take those moments. Um, the, another thing is um, planning or scheduling. That bedtime for them is very important, not just for them and getting their sleep, but for you to have a moment to let your body um, rest, let your mind rest, um, for you to even get those last things that you couldn't do um, while they were awake. Um, I know at, at nighttime, I would get our clothes ready. Or at nighttime, I would just sometimes just take out a book and read or watch a little TV before I get ready to go to sleep. So that helps with my mental too, because I know that I have to be my best um, as a single mom to be the best for him. Um, spiritually, always, um, you know, that's just one thing that you just you need um it keeps you grounded and also um with that having a village it takes a village that is my favorite saying it takes a village to raise a child teach a child everything um my village is um strong as a single mom um i do have his grandparents who um uh, when i need it and i have learned uh, to say and speak up and say, hey, I need a moment um, that I can call them and say, hey, can you watch them for a second? Or um, my sorority sisters, hey, I just need at least an hour or a moment to um, just be disconnect as, as a mummy. Um, so having a village um, with a friend, a family member or anything and having a um, village when you need to talk to um, someone. Um, I often talk to my male cousin um, when I don't talk to my dad about things boy-wise because I'm a, I'm a girl raising a, um, a, a woman raising a, a little boy so I have to ask him about different things as far as okay what do boys do? Uh, when do I need to get him from sitting to standing and um, um, using the bathroom, how do I get him involved in this or in that um, as a single mom? So reaching out to those different people that you trust to give you sound advice. And even with the advice that you get from anyone, you still have to make your own decision. And um, a lot of times that comes as a single mom with self-doubt and you um because you think am i doing the right thing is this is should i do it the way that someone told me or should i do it the way um that i was doing? i say mix it all together but you still have to do what's best for you and your child um because self-doubt is always there um i think that's as any parent because you want to make sure that you are doing the right thing for your child and i just say train them the way you want them to do and nothing will, I mean, life happens, but if you instill in them those good foundational skills, um, 
the way that they should live life the right way, um, then things will go the right way for you um, until life happens. And then those are those teachable moments that you have. Um, I often say, uh, my son, um, we have a lot of teachable moments um, because I, before I became a mom, the one thing I said was I would never say no, well, not say no. I will always answer my child's questions, the whys, the whys. And those whys, a wise has um, led me sometimes to be like, wait a minute, little boy, uh, you're using this language in the uh, wrong way. Like the other day, he says, "Mommy, how dare you? Wait a wait a minute, not, not how dare you? Um, let's let's talk about how we use this language in the right way." But I've answered his whys and I've expanded his language um, and exposed him to different things, so he's grasping all that. Um, information, which sometimes backfires on me, but I have to, you know, have another teachable moment. Hey, that's not how we use that language. Um, we use it in a different manner, but he's definitely connecting um, in all those aspects. Um, the last thing I just want to um, talk about is um, our outlet. Um, have an outlet for yourself, um, whether that sometimes I have colored and my color coloring has changed to creating uh, Bitmoji classrooms for teaching. Sometimes my life of teaching spills over into my life of uh, motherhood and it, that kind of um, is my outlet uh, when I need just a, a moment or what, uh, so so um, make sure you just definitely take those moments to yourself. Um, have a village, take care of yourself, and um, your children are going to grow uh, in life. And you just always have those teachable moments. So. Nisi, thank you so much. So I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you some questions. Um, sure. Everybody that's out there watching, please use the chat box to ask questions or interact. Um, so I'm going to brag on you for a little bit um, because you got your master's and you have your own home. Like you've done, you've, you've reached these milestones and accomplishments as a single mom. And I know the road wasn't easy. How did you, I guess it's a two part question. How did you surpass all the hard days? And what was the biggest um, thing that helped you as a single parent to be able to continue, you know, reaching your milestones and accomplishments? Um, okay, uh, sorry, got a little emotional talking about myself. Excuse me. Um, You're amazing, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um the house um that was something that i knew i wanted own space to grow into um and so you know um uh, being a homeowner is not an easy joke um great job um I will. Sorry. He's, he's been playing his slime and he let me know that he washed his hands. Um, <laughs> and what's to show you guys. Um, so I, I wanted to create a home for us um, that we could grow into that will be just for us. Um, and there's many programs out there. I went to a... Uh, yes, you may. Um, I went to a program that was for, you know... Uh, getting your own home, how do you go through that and all that. So I made sure that when I stepped out to do that, that um, <laughs> we weren't going to have any issues when I created this house. Can you go get that out your teeth and sit right over there? All right. Um, I will. Um, the other thing, uh, the house. Oh, my masters. That was, again, with my village. 
Um, uh, at the time when I was doing that, my sister decided to move in um, the house with me and uh, she became my inside village um, with my niece and nephew. You know, um, I would have to call her sometimes and um, say, hey, I got to do this online class. Can you watch him? Or um, when I had to go to um, the actor and my mom, uh, hey, who can take him? How can we juggle this? Planning it out. And sometimes you do, you have to plan out to a T to make sure, hey, who has them um, and what's going on? Because my child um, is very allergic. Uh, he's allergic to dairy products. He's allergic to peanuts. He's allergic to um, seafood, eggs, as he's yelling, yelling out cheese. And so even with that, I had an extra stress on my shoulders because I had to make sure he had his EpiPen with him, his Benadryl with him. Um, I made sure that who was keeping him new, and he even knows now, you know, to a T, what are you allergic to? What do you look for um, in, you know, having a village? Because if it wasn't people that knew him, like my coworker sometimes watches him for moments. And, you know, I had to, you know, literally go over with them. Hey, these are the things I had to sometimes take snacks to make sure that he only ate what was given to him. So all of those things just take time and planning. And um, again, that's with that bedtime. If you get them in the bed at a certain time, then you can go ahead and plan for your next day. Hey, what do they need in their bag? Hey, what would they need to function? Do I have an extra set of clothes, bottles, if this happens? Sometimes you can't plan for those uh, things that happen in life, but sometimes you can and you just be ready. You're like, oh, and don't sweat. Spoil milk. I, um, I know you've heard that, you know, don't cry over the spoil milk. It hurts um, when things happen and you're like, no, that's not how it's supposed to go, but it's going to happen. That is part of life. Even when you're planning to a T, it doesn't always go how you um, plan it. Thank you. All right. We do have a couple of comments. Uh, one, oh, he is so cute. Yes, Aiden, my little prince is cute. Um, somebody said he did a great job of washing his hands. <laughs> High five, Aiden. There's a question on here that says, I find myself overcompensating because my son does not have a dad. How can I overcome that feeling or is it okay to have that feeling? It is definitely okay to have that feeling. Um, five years in, and I still, I can tell you personally, I have not overcome that feeling. I have those nights where I think, what in the world? Why did I choose him? Um, but then I think about him and the greatest blessing gift ever given to me. Um, and it's funny because... Um, I saw a little meme the other day that said, um, where someone said, um, I, I prayed to God for a man, and now I have a little boy sleeping in the bed with me. Hey, <laughs> you do. It's not your man, but this little boy, when I, my hair is look, looking crazy, he loves me. Um, he tells me, good job when I'm sweating. Um, he tells me, you're an awesome mom. Um, all that stuff. Um, I get from him. You're always going to have that feeling of, oh, um, why, why, um, as far as a dad. But I say do those things that you know you're supposed to do. Um, like, don't, I say don't spoil them. Like, I think he's supposed to have every toy that he's having because if it was mom and dad, mom and dad would be giving him this, this, this. No, no, no. We're still going to learn our manners. We're still going to do those things that we can do inside our budget. But I'm not going to give him more or less than what I can give. Because if I start giving more than what I can give, I'm always going to be trying to meet that level. So what I can give him is all that I can give him. Now, I did um, involve him in, like, sports where he will come in contact with um, gentlemen. So, like, he's been in soccer. Um, He's been in T-ball. We did um, IXL uh, basketball inside. 
So he's had those um, contacts because that is one thing that I'm thinking. Um, now he wants to go. Uh, he keeps talking about football, but I'm not a football mom. Um, <clears throat> he's been talking about going fishing lately. Yeah, with um, Papa. And so I've asked my dad, hey, can you take him fishing? If my dad won't do it, I have asked, um, again, that cousin that I trust who has boys. Um, and I, you know, sometimes I send him over there so that he has that type of interaction with a um, male figure because that's the only thing that I don't want him not to have is um, interaction with a male uh, figure. She really love that you brought that up because, I mean, as great of a mom that you are, you can't provide that masculine bonding. So I'm so grateful that you do have men in your life that are willing to step in to do those masculine things, like get his hair done. I see that fresh cut. Yes, yeah, he, um, I Papa it. or his cousin will take him to get the haircut. I, I did go one time. I went to his first haircut because you know that's a mommy moment that you don't want to miss. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, those are the things that um, I try to find. I mean, sometimes you're not going to find, but if I can, I will ask. And that's the and, biggest thing that um, you have to put your pride aside a little bit and ask and, for those ooh, things. Ooh, that's a beautiful thing. Aiden, you want to say something? Yeah. I'm, he's, he's telling us about his rice milk. Um, we tried oh. rice milk today. Okay, but yeah, I love that you said that sometimes you have to put your pride aside. Um, sometimes, you know, your pride is like, no, I'm gonna do this by myself. But then you realize it's bigger than you. It and is. it's about Aiden. It's about yeah. your child. Um, I have a comment that just popped up. It says, what it said, that's good that you have those people, um, to help you. But what advice would you give to someone who is in another state that doesn't have those people in arm's reach? Um, I would say, um, when you don't have those people in reach, um, I have re reached out to my coworkers, um, even some of my coworkers I've asked for, because uh, again, I'm stating that I have, you know, well, my sister doesn't live here anymore, but my um, parents do, but sometimes my parents are not available and sometimes, um, uh, my close friends are not available. I've reached out to coworkers. Um, I've created a bond with um, three of my coworkers, two female and one male that, you know, we've been to each other's houses, we know each other's family, and created that bond. And sometimes he goes with them um, because you need somebody. This, you can't do it all by yourself. And those people that you trust, you have to have a circle. And it, it can be small. Trust me, it's not everybody because I am a panicky mother. Um, so, um, but try to find someone in your small circle that you definitely trust and have that conversation with them. Because um, even like I was said when um, he was small and using the bathroom, I didn't know when you started them, you know, standing up or opinion, but I had to reach out to a male figure and it wasn't my uh, dad that I reached out to, to have that conversation. Um, cause I don't know. And I had to admit, Hey, I don't know what, you know, uh, what things do I do for him as a young boy that I need to do now that will follow him in those days coming up. So create a village. If you don't have your family, if you're not at home and your state's away, you have to create a village. And that also ties in with the pride. If you are normally an introverted person that stays to yourself, once there's a child involved, you can't. You've got to join some mommy and me groups. You've got to go to some mommy and me play dates and make a village around you so that you aren't doing it alone. And you're gonna need those play dates. Play dates are very important, um, especially for your child. Um, even with this um, pandemic going on, um, he has play dates sometimes on Zoom with other um, children, just so he can have some more interactions. They have show and share, and and you know, uh, one time we even played uh, tag your it, and I had to be his person running around with the phone, um, running 
like I was the person on the phone saying, tag your it. And, you know, um, you have to create those things. Yeah. I mean, I, I was raised by a single parent, no, you know, no father in the home. And I got to say it was lonely because my mother was so to herself, she wouldn't allow um, any people in because of her pride. And so I can imagine how differently my childhood would have been had I been able to have play dates or, you know, things of that nature. So it's important not only for you to socialize, but for your child to socialize. Yeah. So I love, I love that you said to make your own village, even if you're not near your family, you've got to make your own village because it's important for your mental health and your child's mental health. You guys are asking some great, great questions. Any other questions or comments yeah. about single parenthood? I know it's not easy. Um, it says, go ahead. I said it's not, and you do have those moments or you, uh, late night, you be like, oh, Lord, what did I do? Like, what's going on? But then, you know, you snap back to it. Okay, what can I do to change this? All right, what's next? Um, what can we do for, like, we were talking about going, uh, he wants to get out again since we're still not um, interacting with kids. Hey, we're going to the farm. Go pick some strawberries, you know. Well, he had told me one time, <laughs> it hurt my feelings, um, but I was like, uh, he was like, I want to go play. I was like, I'm your play buddy. Let's go play. He said, I want a little person. <laughs> oh, hurt, hurt my feelings, hurt my feelings. But I understood that mommy was there playing with him, going outside, t-ball, soccer. I promise you, I saw that side with him. Um, even creating tennis in the house with a balloon. But he wanted a little person, and I understood that. You know, the big person wasn't uh, satisfying him anymore, so you <laughs> have to read those things. Yeah, uh, we've got in here a couple of thank yous. We've got very good advice about reaching other, uh, reaching out to others for support. As you've said, you need to get support, but you also need to be selective. selective. Um, it says pride can be dangerous to us all. But yeah, be selective about who you are letting in your life and who you're letting in your child's life. Um, can we talk about, I didn't ask you this in advance, so if you are not comfortable, it's okay. Um, yes. can we talk about dating as a single mom and what's that, what that's like? Woo! That is a whole can of worms, but yes, we can talk about it. Um, uh, dating still need a village because I have not been exposing, um, still single, um, but have not been exposing my child to, uh, other parties unless I knew it was serious and nothing has turned serious. So um, I use my village and I tell them the truth. Hey, I want to go on a date. Um, this is how long I'm going to be gone. Um, and I, you know, I'm coming back and pick up and the person that I'm dating has to realize that, Hey, we're going here. We're going here. Let me know, plan ahead. Tell me what's going on. Cause I do have to take my child somewhere and I do let like the person know what's going on. This, sorry, you guys. These these are our WWE SmackDown Bears because uh, again, I have a boy, so it's not tea parties. It's wrestling all the time. <laughs> Hold on one second, okay? Um. So yes, um, I do use my village, and I tell them, hey, I'm going here, there, um, and who I'm going with. Um, there have been a, a lot of online dating because you don't get to go out to lounges and just sit <laughs> on a Friday late night. Um, and a lot of times when he spends the night over someone's house, it's, it's like last minute and what is, what is mostly my, grand, uh, my parents and, and my cousin, that's the only house he would have spent the night over. Um, but it's, it's like last minute decision. Hey, I don't wanna leave grandparents' house. Well, how I wish you had told me that because I could have planned to go out and, you know, do something else and that doesn't happen. So it, it really is a, a planned time to to date and you do not want to expose them to um, people until you know for sure that this is serious, it's going somewhere. Um, 
I say you don't want to wait six, eight months um, to just expose them, not necessarily make it a family uh, thing of exposure, but you don't want to wait a long time, but you do want to um, uh, have that time for you and that person to develop before you expose them to your child. I, I love that because, you know, if you're constantly bringing somebody new into your child's life, one, that's confusing, and two, you know, that's the view that they're getting of relationships that, you know, week after week, month after yeah. month is somebody new. So right. I love that you don't introduce anybody until you know, you know what, this this could be serious, this could be going somewhere, um, because your son is a package deal. And so before you can get too serious, you have to real, you know, find out whether or not the person you're dating can handle having a package deal and how do you treat my child? And, and another thing, when you said that, I thought about it. Um, I use my earpiece when I'm talking to people because mm -hmm. that's a conversation between us. And, you know, when your child starts hearing different voices, you know, they're like, who is this? Who is this? And my child right. goes, when he doesn't know a voice, who is this? Who is this? <laughs> so my students out there, my little babies, y'all might be a little too young for this, but there is a movie called um, Don't Be a Minister Society While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. And it was a spoof on a lot of different 90s era movies. But there is one scene where this woman has her kids and she's like, what do y'all say to the nice man? And the kids are like, are you my daddy? <laughs> you do not want that. You do not want your kids to think that every man is their new daddy. So be selective, be smart, be safe. Um, I see a few laughters. Oh, was you just talking about, about that? Um, yes. What you just talking about that, um, that is one thing that I'm going through right now. My little smart baby is asking about his oh. daddy. And who that has opened a whole lot of emotional mm -hmm. things for me. Mm -hmm. But um, I decided that I was going to be honest with him. And um, he has seen pictures of him. Um, because I, I mean, I do want you to know who he is. If you saw him on the street, uh, mm -hmm. at least know who he, who he looks like. Um, I've reached out, tried to have some dialogue, uh, with his dad and that hasn't happened. So I just left it to him as, Hey, he's in, in another state, uh, which is true. Um, and that he's just busy and right now we can't come stay with him, but um and that's totally age appropriate that's being open and honest without bashing or degrading um yeah, i do not plan on ba bashing I, I want him to create that own if it ever happens you know right but just uh, open and honest answers that's fantastic open and honest age appropriate because as we know aiden is about to turn five so it's not like you're going to sit down and be like aiden let me tell you what happened with him no it's age appropriate and not disparaging or putting you know the father down because um sometimes you'll find parents that try to punish the other partner um and so i'm i'm really grateful that you are in a headspace where that's not what you're choosing to do you're choosing to just you know what this is what it is and maybe one day and you're leaving it open for so guys if you guys can't tell by now nisi denicia is <laughs> is just fantastic i mean honestly that's the reason I brought her in, she is accomplished and smart and beautiful. And she's taking care of this handsome little gentleman. Y'all, when I see Aiden, he opens doors for me because his mama and his, his village has taught him how to be a gentleman. Um, let's see, there's a comment that says, my son asks the same thing, especially when he sees him on the internet with his other children. I find myself giving him more to try to make up for the things his dad does not do. Here it is summer and he has nowhere to go for vacation and my daughter 
gets to go with her dad. Oh man, Ebony. Yeah, that definitely is tough. That is very tough. Um, I would just say curate those things um, that you and him do. I hate that, you know, you won't be able to do it with your um, daughter, but I have, um, I was talking to a mother the other day and um, during, actually during school time and she would come and check her daughter or son out. And I said, well, where are y'all going? She said, well, I create dates for my children individually um, so that they know that this is our time. It's not just having family time. They're on the bed. Okay. The guest bedroom. Sorry. Um, but to create separate dates for your children, um, to have that one-on-one -on -one time. And I never thought about doing that because um, I am... I do want other children in my future, but um, creating that one-on-one -on -one time. So this might be a time that you just do things with him um, that, you know, doesn't happen with your daughter and not necessarily put it out on like uh, internet or Facebook. Just have those memories with you and him. And if it's something that, um, your son says to your daughter and she wants to go, then, you know, you do it again, but to have those just personal dates. Um, yeah, um, that's actually a really son. great idea. So daughter is, so when daughter's with dad, then you and son get to have special, you know, Oh, this is ice cream day, or this is what, you know, so special. I like that. It says uh, in the comment, it hurts, but I try not to bash him. I want him to have his own perspective of him, which is smart. I never talk down. I just try to let him know that people make time for who and what they want. He seems to understand, but how will I know exactly how he feels? Um, keep up that open communication. Definitely. Definitely open communication. Um, and as they grow older, uh, it's going to be some hurt things in there because then they start to process what was going on. But that's going to be something that he has with him um, and not necessarily you. You keep your things on your side, Sonny. Like you said, try not to bash him because you never want him to say, well, mom said that you... No, you can't never say I said anything bad about you. I let him develop his own uh, perspective and feelings about the situation. And that's something that the dad's going to have to deal with that answer later, later. But that's nothing that you can answer to. But um, yeah. definitely still have conversations. Because as you heard him come ask, hey, where's my dad? I said, we still talk. I can't run from the question you know we still have to talk about it um mm -hmm. i can just give him the best answer that i can i love that um we have on here i'm a parent of mixed children and i'm struggling on how they can learn to embrace both their cultures of black and white i feel like my lack of knowledge does the black culture injustice any suggestions beyond asking friends also the black side of their family is not part of their lives oh jennifer that's tough Ooh, that's a heavy one um if they're not a part of their lives um you're just gonna have to do a little bit of research um but i i can understand where you would have um mixed feelings about you know what to expose them to but um and that's funny because me and uh actually courtney was having this um discussion about things that um we did not get exposed to as children Mm -hmm. Um, like I didn't, I never been canoeing or rafting or, uh, mm -hmm. zip lining or campfires or, you know, just, uh, just different things. But I believe you can expose them to it, it, it all. It doesn't have to necessarily be, or a black or a white thing, or, um, just expose them to it. If it's, it's something that, um, 
it's out there exposed into it. It's something if you want to do it, um, something that uh, you see, just expose them to it. Um, Cause you never know necessarily what they're going to get attached to or what they're going to like. Mm-hmm. Um, I can say like my mom, she put me in all kinds of sports, b- basketball, soccer, tennis. I did it all when I was little. Mm-hmm. Um, and she let me choose what I, you know, would like or explore. So I just say, um, research it. If you really have a question about it, but you should have somebody in your your village that you could really ask the honest. Hey, if it's me, ask me. <laughs> or, or I'll, I'll not afraid to create a new relationship and and answer some honest questions because it's. It, it, I understand your question because you really want to know, but you don't want to feel like offensive coming off and asking somebody. So no, yeah. um, the door is open. <laughs> <laughs> You're the because we, we all want to grow. We all right. want to grow. And I, um, so Jennifer, I say, I'm going to add to this. I'm going to say, y'all are going to have to learn together. You and your kids are going to have to learn together. Yeah. You know, um, there are some things where race doesn't play a part, you know, but things like hair, like if you have never done black hair before, then that's going to be something you're going to have to learn, you know, learn. YouTube, exactly. you're going to have to ask. We still, but you, the, the thing about the hair is everybody asks these questions about it's, hair. It's I not a, do. Like right. a white thing. It's, <laughs> it's a, do I need to use this shampoo? Uh, right. What kind of oil do I put on? Like, it's just, those are just questions of life. Like, yes. and, and, and like if you somebody said, is like, you. Feel like, I shouldn't ask this question, then that's not the type of person you want in your circle. Like, uh, right. open and honesty. Right. And like, you know, like we've been saying this whole time, you have to create a village. Like I know you said, you know, beyond asking your friends, but you're going to have to, if your friends are going to be part of your village, they're going to have to get used to you asking questions because you might not know. Like skin, uh, what is it? Um, Sunscreen. I wear sunscreen every day. And there are people that still look at me and say, but you're black. Why are you wearing sunscreen? Because skin is skin. It is skin. <laughs> so, so yeah, you're going to have to open your, let your pride down and open up your circle. Like I said, you can join mommy groups. There are groups out there literally for parents of biracial kids. Join them, ask questions, interact, find families that you can do play dates with, whether, whether virtually or in person. Um, it says most times Caucasians don't eat how African Americans eat. The parenting is a bit different as well. Having African American friends can be beneficial. I'd make them a part of my village personally. And see, the parenting can be different within the same culture. So it's not just, you know, a black or white thing. Like Nisi was raised completely different than I was. I look at Nisi's childhood and I'm like, I wish, you know, and we're both, you know, black women in our thirties. So, um, so I, I don't want you to just focus on the black and white. I want you to focus on how can I raise my children well-rounded and start asking questions and reaching out and asking for help from those around you. You know, there are, look, I grew up eating the box macaroni and cheese. I didn't know any other black folks that ate that. They ate the baked stuff with an egg in it. So, (laughs) So it's not just, you know, black and white. It literally is. Every household is different. You learn and grow from the people around you. So just be mindful of the people that are around you. If you aren't, you know, feeling the people that are around you, then create a new village because you are the people that you hang out with. I like China's response. Thank you for reaching out and wanting to even learn about the different cultures. Like that is a big prideful right. step like mm-hmm. to even that you want to do that so that's great so yeah find that village that don't mind you or like she said there's plenty um there's plenty of groups that you can join that will if you can't find that 
person in your little circle that will help you um, answer those things. Thank you so much. All right, y'all, any last questions? I don't want to take up too much of uh, Nisi and Aiden's time because Lord knows that little boy is ready to go play with his mom. Yes, he is. So he is when any... I, saw, I hope he's okay. <laughs> any last minute questions or comments for Nisi? Um, go ahead. While y'all are typing, Nisi, I just want to say to you, hold on, let me turn my camera on so I can look you in the face. <laughs> let me look you in the face, girl. Um, but I just wanted to say I love you. I appreciate that, you know, you are willing to give your time and knowledge and personal, because this is a personal class. This is not, you know, from a book. <laughs> this is from your heart, your home, your life. So I just wanted to say thank you. You are a gem. I've got on here. Uh, I love this class. I hope we can all be back together in class in person soon. I know, I wish we could, um, hopefully, I will definitely keep y'all updated once we get back into in-person class, but I'm grateful that y'all continue to meet up with us on Zoom. Um, so I am going to, it doesn't look like we have any other questions or comments, so I'm going to leave, leave you guys with what I always say. I love you. You are worthy, 